get to the Middle East. Both of you gentlemen, yeah. when you were in the green room waiting to do this, I noticed you had NBC Nightly News on and you were watching what's going on in the Middle East. And we're all watching that right now. Mr. Sanz, I'm going to start with you on this. It's been about a year now, of course, since the October 7th attack that we will all remember forever and ever. Today, U.S. destroyers involved in stopping another attack on Israel. We had the missiles raining in from Iran. The U.S. vows to have a small number, maybe even larger now, we'll see, but they're saying small number of troops there to prevent a larger scale war in the region. Do you support American involvement in the Middle East, and if so, on what kind of scale? First and foremost, look, my heart breaks for the killing that's happening in the Middle East and has been happening for the last uh, year and even beyond that. Uh, no matter where the, it, it's occurring, the, the innocent loss of life should never be celebrated. It should be mourned. Uh, I look at this, uh, uh, this context and conflict through a unique lens. As a West Point graduate and a former military officer and infantry officer, I know the cost of war. And this is the cost of war. Uh, but I believe a couple things to be true when it comes to the Middle East. Number one, we absolutely should be supporting our strongest ally, that is Israel in the Middle East. And they have a fundamental right to protect themselves uh, as a nation, uh, as a people that were attacked by terrorist organizations, whether it's Hamas or Hezbollah. And so what we're seeing now, this escalation in the region, what this speaks to is actually the, the failure of American leadership globally to actually exert the strong power and force to deter this sort of activity. Instead, what we've seen in the last few years and policy positions, again, policy positions offered by my opponent is actually emboldening these enemies in the region. My opponent had two opportunities in Congress to vote for two bipartisan bills that would have stopped funding American dollars to go to Iran, and he voted no. And see, this is what we get. We have Iran that now becomes the funneling source for Hezbollah, the Houthis, and Hamas. You need to hold them accountable, and America needs to project that strength again. You have my word, both of you. We'll get to the last year in the Middle East and, and what you think about what's been going on, specifically with what's going on with American involvement. Sure. Do you think the U.S. should be involved? Uh, you saw the news today. Yeah, if so, uh, on what kind of scale should the U.S. be involved? Uh, the U.S. has to be involved. There should be no daylight between the United States and Israel when it comes to Iran and to terror. And that's why we have the aircraft carrier groups there. Thank God for the aircraft carrier groups and our investment in Iron Dome. Otherwise, uh, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of uh, Israelis would have been killed today. Uh, but for our aircraft carrier groups, our partnership, CENTCOM uh, and Iron Dome, uh, lives were spared. Iran. Uh, is funding uh, terrorism in Lebanon with Hezbollah, uh, Hamas in, in, in the West, in, in, in Gaza, uh, Islamic Jihad and Hamas in the West Bank. Uh, once the international community joins us and says we are no longer dealing uh, with Iran and Iran's terror, uh, then we will have peace. But for Iran, I believe there would be peace. And so this is an issue where we need serious leaders. We need bipartisan, pragmatic leaders. I worked in Israel for many, many years uh, as a member of Congress in just 18, 20 months. I've been uh, to the region four times, to Rafa, to Jordan, to Egypt, to Israel. I understand it uh, very, very well and have become a, a, a leader on this issue and we desperately need it. Um, I, I don't think this is a time or an issue uh, that should be politicized in any way. This is a bipartisan issue and it must remain that way. And since we're alternating questions, I'll actually start with you, but stay on the same topic here. But go ahead, 30 okay. seconds. So again, my opponent just said, but for Iran on this issue. Well, again, this comes to accountability tonight, folks. That's what you and I want to see tonight. Then why did my opponent vote no on those two bipartisan bills that would have stopped American dollars to go to Iran? And instead, what we're seeing now is exactly this. Uh, and, and that is true. And so it's you, you say that if it wasn't it's for Iran. Not. Oh, sorry, you're saying you voted yes on those two? You no, you're going to get a yeah, chance Yeah, for here. sure. Go but ahead. It's really go important. I mean, because ahead. after the last debate, I walked over uh, to my opponent and I said, look, you'll do better if you don't lie. People know when you're lying. Nobody believes. So uh, that I have done yes anything other than stand up to Iran and that for you to suggest so you voted that yes I am on those responsible, two bills? that anyone is responsible you, you for what happened on October 7th. Directly. These are people who are trying to kill me. It is so wrong. Don't sit there smugly. 
uh, and make things up. It's really Those disappointing. Hate it. They absolutely hate lying politicians who will do anything to get elected. Response to that? Yeah, well, yeah, again, he, he won't answer the question directly. Did you vote yes or no on those two appropriations bills? There is no single that bill were bipartisan that I have that ever supported funding uh, to Iran. There, there is, were two bills that would have stopped funding American dollars that said no more funding will go to Iran. I, Greg Landsman voted no I twice on those two bipartisan bills. I know that your consultants have told you to talk about these two bills. I don't know what so these two bills are. So you're saying you voted yes. You have got to stand up to your consultants is and say I'm not going to Is it the same way that, that you voted I'm in error for the last bill that would have held illegal immigrants accountable for committing I don't uh, know sex what crimes on about. women last this week? Is a lot I don't of think fun. he knows what he's talking about. I feel like I'm around the dinner table. We're talking politics. We're having fun. I just need to move on. Accountability. I'm glad that both of you got an opportunity to get in there, but I want to talk more yeah, about sure. the Middle East, which is obviously important. I don't think there's any disagreement or not much disagreement that after what happened October 7th, a year ago, that Israel was justified in defending itself. There's no disagreement on that, but there's a lot of criticism about what's happened since. More than 40,000 Palestinians have died, thousands more without a home. You mentioned Israel launching attacks in Lebanon. Do you support Israel's current actions? Yes, uh, I, I believe even that with Israel, the 40,000 dead. E, well, a big chunk of that. First of all, these are two traumatized people, uh, Jews and Palestinians. Uh, we have a, a lot in common, including the fact that nobody wants us. And Iran has been uh, a, uh, a, a meddler in all of this. And I, I do think, but for Iran, we would be closer to peace. Uh, what Israel is attempting to do is, and, and successfully so far, is dismantle Hamas and to dismantle the terrorist network that is Hamas in Gaza so that the Palestinians can have Gaza back. And they're trying to do it in Lebanon with Hezbollah. Uh, uh, this is something that the United Nations uh, promised that they would do 15, 16, 17 years ago with the, the United uh, Nations Resolution 1701. Uh, the Lebanese want Hezbollah out. Uh, and the sooner the world comes together and says, we're going to stand uh, with Israel and with the Palestinians, get Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis out uh, of the region, and Iran sideline focused entirely on Iran, we will get uh, to a Middle East uh, 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 peace and stability that we haven't seen. Now, I'm a child of the 90s. I remember when Clinton had Arafat and Rabin, and I remember thinking that is a that, that, what a wonderful thing to do. And my hope is that I will be part of a generation that of leaders that ultimately gets to peace and stability. Mr. Sanza, again, uh, Israel is an ally of America. We all agree that what happened October 7th, a year ago, was despicable, violent, unthinkable. Uh, what's happened since? Do you support what Israel has done, their strategies in the Middle East and Gaza? Yes, because again, we have to support our strongest ally, Israel. And, and you're right, Mike, what, what happened uh, a year ago is devastating and heartbreaking. Uh, and let's hold the accountability where it belongs here in the Middle East, and that is to terrorist organizations that have no regard for human life, whether it's Palestinian or Lebanese. They need to be held accountable. In fact, they have over 100 hostages still detained today in tunnels in Gaza, and they need to be released today. And they can do that, but they refuse to do it because all they care about is the preservation of their leadership. Now, of course, looking at this through a unique lens as a former military officer, is that you would hope that the Israeli Defense Force is operating under rules of engagement, operating under international law, because they are a sovereign nation that is committed to that. And so that's what we would hope for. But again, when you've got rockets, 500 rockets being fired into northern Israel, and some of them just in the last year have hit Arab children that were playing in soccer fields. I mean, that is wrong. And you've got to hold the people accountable. I, I, I just have to address again, this is not an ad hominem attack. This is accountability for the policies that my opponent has voted on on the floor of U.S. Congress. And so if he's claiming that he did not vote that way on these two appropriations packages, then after this debate, he needs to go back to his register and clarify that and maybe make the same error correction that he made last week when he claimed that he voted no in error for an immigration bill. I was going to say we had a Republican and a Democrat agree on a topic, but then I saw your hand go up and with what he said, you wanted to respond. Israel and anti-Semitism are two of many, many issues that need to uh, remain bipartisan. The idea that he would bring up partisan attacks is problematic for both the effort it's to fight anti-Semitism and 
to defeat Iran and to deal with uh, the awfulness that is happening in the Middle East. He's now, he agrees that they were appropriations bills. This wasn't funding for Iran. They were appropriations bills. I we ultimately appropriations passed bills that would have a bipartisan uh, budget. And so I, I really do hope that moving forward, uh, if he runs again, that he appreciates the fact that Israel and anti-Semitism need to be bipartisan. Right, I gave Absolutely. you a little more yeah. than 30 there. Yeah. I'm just going to give you a chance to respond, Mr. Landsman. Just let him do that since sure. he, for the most part, let you finish. 30 seconds and we need to move on. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. This, this, let this point be made clear. You do not have to be Jewish to be pro-Israel, okay? And, and I'm emphatically pro-Israel and for the Jewish, the Jewish people. Uh, again, the clarity on, the, on this bill, and this will be the last that I'll make mention of it. Oh I God. said that he had the opportunity to vote no on an appropriation package that would have stopped the funding. Not that he himself has funded it, but again, there's measures that we could take legislatively that could stop the actions that we're seeing. And the Middle East, with these terrorist organizations, they are getting resources from nations like Iran, and that needs to stop. American resources need to stop going there. We will do it on day one.